Hello and welcome to Racecraft once again. I did a video on this race car last time and we had a Fitech throttle body injection on it, dynoed the car and all that sort of thing. Well, as it turned out, it was a disaster. The Fitech gave us nothing but trouble. The owner took the car to a hill climb. It flooded, it blew black smoke, it wouldn't start. It put so much fuel into the engine that actually hydraulic the engine. It came back here, I reset the computer, reset a whole lot of parameters on the computer, took it to another racetrack, wouldn't start at all. Tried to start it with the aero start, all that sort of stuff, would not run. Eventually, got a message on the handheld that said ECU unresponsive. So I rang the supplier that I got the Fitech from and they said, no, nope, the computer's gone, send it back. So I did and I fitted a Holly Sniper. The idea was that the Holly Sniper was going to solve all of our problems that we're having with the Fitech. So I'm at that stage now where it's all fitted up, the fuel lines are done, the fuel pressure regulators mounted, everything's ready to go. All I have to do now is with the handheld go into the setup wizard and set it up. And that's where we've got a problem. So what I'm supposed to do now is go into the setup wizard and program the ECU. So you press setup wizard and it doesn't go there. So go back to home. Okay, this time it's worked. So I've got to scroll down now and tell it which one it is. The problem is, is that it just changes to random things like that. Now there's engine displacement. Go back. Now it won't go back. So we've got a real problem with this thing not wanting to communicate with the ECU. Cancel. And go back. Okay, number of cylinders. We'll try that. Okay, we'll go next. Go to... It's just changing on its own. And this is the problem. If I can't get this to work, to tell the ECU what size the motor is, how many cylinders and all that sort of thing, we're, we're stuck. There, that's just changed on its own again. So what do we do? Well, I do have a solution. When this car had the old Wolf computer on it, and I'm talking about a computer that is 25 years old. The car ran great. The reason I changed it was to get the modern technology, to get self-tuning and upgrade. Well, it looks like we've just gone backwards. So what I'm going to do is build my own version of the Sniper. So the plan now is to put this very old Wolf computer Back on the car, this is the one that actually came off in the first place. It's got those great little diagnostic lights on the back, so you can see at a glance what's working or not working. Uh, these have proven to be hugely reliable, as opposed to the Sniper and the Fitech before it. So I'm going to use that computer, and what I've made up is my own throttle body injection. So what I've got here is long piddle injectors. So they go right down into the into the airstream. This is just a Holly carburetor spacer, and I've made up these injector holders, screwed them in there. Got a little trimming up to do on those threads there. And then I'm going to put an LS1 throttle body on the top of that. And then that'll just simply bolt to the top of the manifold. So I still get the fuel coming in the top, which is where I wanted it. So we get the chilling effect of the wet fuel in the manifold. Big throttle body on the top. Uh, I'll make an air cleaner adapter so we can put the air cleaner back on it. And hopefully this will solve all the problems that we've had. But these, both the Holly Sniper and the Fitech throttle body injection have been a huge disappointment. So now that I've decided that I'm going to make my own version of a Holly Sniper, you've seen me do one of these before if you've watched the other videos. 
So I won't bore you with all of the, of the details again, but basically what we've got there is four injectors, they're 1000 cc each, and I've put them inside this spacer plate. So they're nice long pintles, so they stick right down into the, into the airstream. So that's that part of it. And then I've bought a 92 millimeter LS throttle body, and I've drilled and tapped the plate, so that'll just bolt straight onto there. Then I made some brackets to hold the fuel rails in place, so now I've just got to do the hoses and so forth. So this, hopefully, will get us some reliability. Run this with the old Wolf computer, and we'll inject into the top of the manifold to get that chilling that I want in the manifold. I've got the throttle body all set now. I've made a little bracket there to hold the air cleaner, and I've put this choke horn, I've put this big radius ram tube on the top. That ring there is to take a normal Holly style air filter. So that was a little bit of extra work. I've got the injectors all mounted in. Our manifold's ready. I've uh, put the long studs in and using this, we've got just enough room to run a, a spacer, an additional spacer underneath the, the throttle body. So that will just go onto there. And then our normal type air cleaner will go onto that. So I'll hook all the hoses up now, uh, get the throttle cable on and so forth. And then uh, I'll give you a look at it when it's all fitted up. Well, it's all together. Got the throttle body on, hooked up all the fuel lines, used another distributor to check whether we had spark and whether they had injector pulse, had all of that. We were pretty much ready for a fire up. Had a little bit of an issue with, an oil, uh, with a petrol leak and it was one of these fittings here that, um, that leaked. Changed the fitting and we've got good fuel pressure. We've got no leaks. So we're at that stage of firing it up. So I'll get in the car, hit the key and see what happens. As for the fitting, you'll never see that again. Got the laptop all set up here. It's talking to the ECU. I've got it on the, the fuel map there. I've got it set up on the fuel map just in case I've got to quickly make some adjustments because on initial startup, what we don't want to do is foul the spark plugs. So um, got that ready. I'll jump in the car, hit the button, see what happens. All right, this is the moment of truth. We'll see whether she fires. <laughs> say that's a success even though it's got different ejectors in it now it's still running on the map that this car had when it had eight injectors in it it's pretty rich I can smell how rich it is so I've probably got to trim some of the fuel out but uh, apart from that we seem to have a runner which is really good it's been a week since I got this car going and I've made a few little changes in the meantime well, mainly one, one big change. Uh, I bought another spacer, just one of these uh, Holly aluminium spacers, and I've milled it off, or machined it off, on a taper. The problem we had was that the front of the air cleaner was sticking up, right up through the bonnet, and it made it difficult to close the bonnet. And I wanted the spacer on there, even though that, uh, that did add a little bit of height. So... I machined the spacer off at a taper, like this. And then fitted the throttle body directly to that spacer. And you can see it's thin at the front here and quite wide at the back. And that's tilted the front of the throttle body down. And that doesn't matter because we don't have float bolts to worry about or anything like that, we can have that downward slope. So what it's done is it's moved the injectors a little bit further away from the, from the butterfly and the throttle body, which shouldn't make any difference, but it's given us that little bit of a slope at the front. So now, about time for a test drive, I guess. I'd say 
it's going all right. Well, got it all running now. AFRs are not too bad. Next thing I'd like to do is take it to the dyno just to make sure that everything's dead right. Fiddle a little bit with the timing and so forth, see what sort of power we can get out of it. But obviously the, the conversion has been pretty successful. Thanks for tuning in.